Hi, I'm Denise from Foursquare Marker Farm, and I just received a shipment, a package of Shetland from Adrian Munn. Uh, of, let me see, make sure I pronounce this right. Darock, Darock, Burns Farm. Okay, hopefully I got that name right. It's Adrian Munn. Uh, this Shetland Fleece Sampler Pack. It is absolutely wonderful. And I know people love to do unboxing videos. And you know what? I've been such a private person for so long that I'm not really good at these unboxing video stuff because I'm like, well, who, you know, who wants to see that? But so here it is. I'm going to take you all the way through all the steps of the video. And I had pretty much started carding it before I realized that I probably should take a before and after picture. So here's the before picture. And the white was suet soaked, and then there's the um, gray over here that's been cold soaked and rinsed. And then this is let's see, light musket. It's been cold soaked and rinsed. And uh, you know, I'm really not sure. I think I said before that I like to spin. Uh, a lot of my wools in the grease, I don't like them completely scoured to death. And I really don't like roving. So a lot of the times, um, I've done a suet soak, but I'm generally not patient enough. And a lot of the fibers that I do work with don't have enough grease to have a really good suet. Shetland does, of course. But I do a lot of cold soaking and then rinsing things. Sometimes with soap, sometimes without soap. If you've never done it before... You would be really surprised how very clean wool gets when it's just cold soaked and how much of lenoin actually comes out with a cold soak. This is, um, it's not very greasy, okay? Like, I guess maybe you would think it would be. Definitely not like it is in its raw form. It's just like a hint of leno and it's a really smooth feeling. This is going to be wonderful to spin just like it is. Um, I won't need any carding lotions or spinning lotions or any of that. This is going to feel just wonderful. It's just a tiny, tiny hint of leno and it, it smells wonderful. It's a sheepy smell. It's a really nice sheepy smell without being like an overpowerful, dirty sheepy smell. It's it's wonderful. So you you just if you've never done it before and you ever get the opportunity, you would be surprised how well this washes up with just a cold soap. Okay, I'm I'm not a big hot scour person, so this is perfect for me. So we got the gray, the musket, and the natural. And basically, what I'm doing is what I normally do. Uh, for the softer, slightly softer fibers, this, uh, you know, I have to ask Adrian what the micron count on this is if she has that information on hand because the handle is really soft. Uh, and I know Shetland comes in a variety of things. Uh, Dylan is down here destroying stuff. Okay, so uh, I know you can get a variety of, you know, micron counts in Shetland, but this is really nice handle. This is really soft, and this will work really well with blending with uh, Angora. And the staple length is just gorgeous. Look at that staple length. So basically what I just do is I just I lay it onto the hand carter. I just pull it. Bam, that flicks the ends. Then I turn it around, pull it, flicks the ends. And I come out with a fluffy piece. Let me show you a better piece since I'm actually holding the phone right now while I'm recording instead of on the tripod or on the stand. And this is the fluffy, how it comes out. Nice and fluffy piece. And then I just spin from, let me pull that off. I will just spin it from either one of the tips or from the fold, depending. But I already know this is going to be a wonderful spin. And uh, after I get it all, I'm going to do all three of the colors first. And I still have the fin on the wheel. So that's going to take a little while. 
So it'll be a little while and I'll come back and start to spin for you. The white, I would like to spin as thin as I possibly can tolerate. Now as thin as I can, as thin as I can tolerate because I can spin pretty thin, but I don't really like it. It drives me insane. So as thin as I can tolerate because I would like to make some sort of Shetland lace type thing. I, uh, I don't like lace. I think you guys know this. I don't like lace yarn. I don't like lace knitting. It's really tedious for me. But I do love Shetland lace. So I'm going to do it and go ahead and push my boundaries here. And get some really fine Shetland from this. All right, I'll see you in a little while. In our next clip. Okay, so I was combing the white last time, but I decided to go ahead and do the musket instead, the light musket, uh, which to me is kind of like a cream with a little fawn on the tips. And I, I decided not to cord it at all or do anything to it at all. So I'm spinning it right from the lock, and it's it's very nice, and it just kind of spinning from the center. Not really the fold or the tips, just from the center. And I've got my highest whirl and very little tension on the ladybug. And if I use my spinner control card, then lay it across here. It looks like it's going to be. I'm little less than a single that is for fingering. Okay, it looks backwards from the way I'm holding it, but you kind of get a general idea. So when I'm done with this, it should be about a fingering weight. And I thought about doing a, a really lace weight, but I said I'm not really a big fan of lace, lace weight spinning it. So usually my sort of lace weight-ish comes out up to about a really light fingering. And there's been a skein or two where I've spun pretty much thread. I use that to ply with, especially when I do silk. It, just, it becomes a single plot for plying. And this just drafts out really easy. I love when I get fibers that draft really nicely from the lock. Not all do. Some you just kind of have to cart. Some just have such a good handle. It just, And I'm just pulling it. Being mindful of how much is going up into the drafting zone. And you, you get a feel for looking at the drafting zone triangle here. You get a feel for or maybe an eye for, I should say, seeing exactly how much fiber is going up into the zone. Let me get a little closer here. See that little bit? You see exactly how much fiber is going into the zone, and that will tell you how thick your single is going to be. And so... When people say that, uh, enjoy your thick yarn because you'll never be able to do that again. Well, if you
you understand the dynamics of what makes the thickness for a ply of yarn, then you will know how to create whatever size yarn you want. If I want a thicker yarn, I just simply add more to the drafting zone. And that's just the way that it works. So right now, let me give you a close-up. I'll put the bobbin. Sorry, that puts me directly into the light. The light source. Okay, there you go. That's a better picture. And I've still got quite a bit to go. It's going to take me a little while. And then when I'm ready to ply, I'll do the, of course, you know how much I love to ply from a um, center pull ball. And it should probably wind up like this. I'll to double back on stuff and get the idea. And then I will find a pattern. And I'll let you know what I decide when I when I get a pattern. Or I have I count my yardage, see what I got, and then go into my Ravelry queue, find a pattern that I like, and go ahead. Uh, that's Dylan down there. Uh, you know what? I just have to say this is pretty interesting. Is that uh, the Luet? The Luet is on the other side of the room. I'm going to pull that out to do some lock spinning. But um, the Luet is a bobbin and lad wheel, and I don't have the high flyer adapter uh, kit for that high speed adapter. And so when I'm doing thin yarn, I'm lacing, and I also get into the habit of pedaling or treadling, I should say, really fast. So it's just a habit. So now I have the ladybug here where I do have a high speed whirl for it over there and I can adjust it and I don't have to treadle as fast as I did on the Luet, but it's become a habit. I think it's just a habit period. If I started the other way around, I still would, you know, go like this, especially when you've got some really good music going on. And one of the things I do, it's, it would be a lot faster if I was doing a long draw, which is totally different yarn from what I want but um, a lot of times this is this particular piece is a little shorter but when a fiber is longer I can kind of get a modified long draw where I'm keeping the left hand in this position pinching the fiber and I'm pulling the fiber pretty far away from uh, the hand bringing it all the way back also probably if I had carded this I would get a modified long draw too and so uh, I'm feeding it into the orifice as fast as I am pedaling. So my drafting speed is pretty fast and this fiber is really easy to draft and it's pretty much just tumbling out of my hands. And if I don't watch it, it will just pretty much it'll fly right through the orifice. So I've gotten accustomed to treadling really fast. I wonder what it does for my cardiovascular workout. <laughs> Then done with this. And this fiber from um, Adrian Munn is just, it is a joy to spin. I just love how it's locked out. And it's so beautiful. And with the tips being a different color than the top, a darker color than the top, uh, it's giving a really nice uh, depth to the yarn. It's going to be really nice. All right, I'll get back to you to this segment after I have finished and I'm ready to ply. Uh, so I finished this the other day, but I noticed that when I made the video that the volume kept going up and down, so I had to remake this part of the video. So here's the Shetland. Getting real close to the Shetland here. And I came up with about 234 yards. This is 2.4 ounces. So about 100 yards per ounce. And it came up to 17.82, I think, for yards per pound. And that is a heavy fingering, roughly, depending on your chart fingering, heavy fingering. 
And I've already decided what I'm going to do with the musket. Um, Shetland is two ply. And I have some Ravelry choices. And I was looking at the Doolittle shawl, which was a really nice one. 